This is my 1.6 HDI Peugeot Partner Engine uh, 2007, roughly about 103,000 miles. In this video we'll show you how I do my uh, full annual service. This will include oil, uh, oil filter, air filter, fuel filter as well, how to bleed the air system from uh, when you replace the uh, fuel filter and also how to reset your uh, service indicator. And this is quite in-depth uh, video, you can skip to different parts, it will be down below, you can, uh, on the video you can click on uh, different bits and pieces, stay tuned. First of all is to uh, drain the oil uh, of the engine and uh, you have to undo the oil cap and for good measure I also undo the, the dipstick as well, just pull it out. The next thing is to drain the oil from underneath the engine. So most cars will have some sort of an under tray to protect the engine, protect the sump and mine is no different. It's got this metal metal, uh, metal plate that's got three bolts and two at the back so I have to remove that before draining the oil. Next thing, uh, that's the oil sump. Next thing is to undo the drain plug. Mine is 40mm socket but yours might be different because I've Replace uh, replace that oil sump. Uh, you can view the video uh, here. Then you have to have a suitable container uh, to put underneath. You have something like that so you can kind of drain. Let's undo this. You kind of push it so it doesn't really straight away shoot until the last moment you kind of you take it off when it's completely undone and be careful that that's hot there we go now I have to wait until it drains but before that I have to undo the oil filter just only slightly undo it so uh, there is additional oil that that, that will drip so already uh, removed the battery I just not to touch anything, make uh, anything uh, shortcut or something. So the filter uh, is down underneath this pipe, so we first need to remove that pipe up, up to there and then we can remove the filter. So this uh, pipe is a simple twist counterclockwise. I think I filed this here so it will be easier for me. And then in this here you twist it counterclockwise again to, to undo. You might as well hold it somewhere around here. Twist it and then you take it out. Uh, there are two, um, don't pay attention to that rivet. There are two uh, things down here that lock in and turn. Here they will be the same, but I've already filed that one for different purposes. So that's the filter, the oil filter down there, and it's a 27 millimeter socket uh, down here. And because generally there is always a bit of oil spill, I will put some tissues around underneath just. Uh, to pick up if there's any uh, a few uh, small drops not to uh, leak oil everywhere so initially somebody uh, gave me an advice when you undo it, don't really take it out the whole thing, just leave it slightly open. Let me undo it slightly. Slightly open so the oil will drain and this will drip down in, in the hole in, in, the, in the sump and you take it after. Well, it's already dripping, a bit of oil everywhere. I also, well, will put a bucket there to just to uh, transfer it kind of quickly. Uh, I've already I have quite a few filters there and I haven't taken it to the tip. Unfortunately it will leak a bit here and there but that's how it is. So here is the filter, the old filter uh, looks like this. Uh, it's got a gasket here, that's the 27 millimeter, and that's the filter. Now I have to mop around here that I spilled everywhere so there won't be oil. So that's how it uh, looks down there where the filter uh, connects and that's the hole for the uh, for the oil. Now of course uh, make yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, uh, whatever you, you, you have. Um, I'll wait uh, like an hour or so so everything uh, to drip down there. 
Next thing, because uh, there is uh, quite a bit of oil in the sump left in these 1.6 HDI engines, you can see in this video how much there is left, but it's roughly about 275 uh, milliliters. So I'm using this huge syringe, well, that, that's what I have, I mean, it, it's quite big, but it works, and I have a tubing, not too sure, I can check what the diameter is, though, so you can find all the components in the, descrip in the description of the video down there. Uh, so I'll stick it in the... Um, uh, in the dipstick, I can try to, if I can extract 100 milliliters, will be quite great. So the two kinks, one uh, one is like that, and then a second one, and then it goes in the sump. So you have to kind of uh, be careful uh, when exactly you hit the first and you hit the second, and, and it goes to the bottom of the sump. So you have to kind of turn it around like that to go through the first. That should be quite okay, so you rotate it until it kind of passes the, the two kinks and let's see if something will come out of this. Yeah, I can see some oil. Let's take this out a bit. Yeah, it's not really uh, that much, but I'll try once more. How much is that? Probably nothing. Uh, probably about 25 milliliters. I'll try once more. So when you put it inside, it hits the first one, rotate it until it goes past that one. First one. Let's see if I can do a bit more this time. Yeah, this time. Substantial more. So what is that? Apparently, let me see. So first time was about 25 milliliters. Second time about 70 milliliters, so that's not too bad. So with this method I managed to drain roughly about 200 milliliters of uh, old oil. Check out that video, it's in the description of the video. There is roughly about 275 milliliters of uh, oil, old oil left. So that's actually quite good to, to, to drain uh, roughly about 200 milliliters out of these 275. There is also a bit of oil uh, down in the filter, so uh, Suck this up as well, just to, I mean you can mop it up with a, I mean it's not really that crucial, but I would like to uh, kind of um, remove as much as possible of um, old oil. There we go, removed as much, well, 20-30 milliliters of oil there. Next thing is to undo the old oil filter, just remove it. I generally just uh, push it from uh, one and the other side and eventually it comes out, but sometimes it's a bit more difficult. There we go. Uh, it came out. Um, oh, that's, uh, that's kind of the old filter. I've got too many of these. I have to uh, one day. Uh, so that's how, that's how it's inside. We've got this metal thing where the other filter goes and it screws on top. I'll uh, have a, with, um, with a rack just clean it a bit, uh, not to be uh, so oily. Next thing is to put a new filter and I'm using um, a Bosch P9238. Uh, well, you can use, uh, they're probably about the same all of them, so you can use anyone. Here is the, the new filter. Uh, looks exactly the same as, as the other one. A crucial thing that in, in this Bosch, that's why um, I like them, but the other probably I also have, but it has a, a rubber ring uh, for, the, for the filter uh, for here to put, um, to put a new ring. The next thing is to uh, put this uh, uh, back into its place in the car. That's the fuel filter uh, and this uh, pointer thing uh, goes into a hole and I'll try to point it with something 
so it goes into that hole here uh, on on at the bottom uh, so it has to be uh, put in there uh, with that thing let's see if I can uh, make it go there so you kind of rotate it and make sure that it's kind of inside and it doesn't rotate it's actually uh, quite good Next thing is to undo the old uh, uh, rubber seal down here. Let's see, it's a bit of a thick, it's a bit of a thick um, screwdriver, but still works. So that's the old one, and I'll put a new one. There is a bit of oil there, so uh, that's actually all right. Of course, you need a bit of oil to oil the uh, the new um, the new uh, rubber uh, seal. And then you put it on. You have to make sure that this straight mine has a, a twist here. So I'll turn it around, well, take it out again, put it back inside. You have to actually make sure that it's kind of, uh, it goes on straight. Otherwise, uh, might not make a good seal. So I'll hold it like that and circle around just to iron out any um, if it, any kinks or anything. But that seems. Uh, straight and it hasn't twisted or anything. The uh, next thing I've uh, cleaned it a bit. Next thing is to uh, put it in, kind of push it. And start uh, tightening. So this is 25 Newton meters. Well, there is another option because it's slightly more difficult to do it like that uh, because the cap is uh, it has the the plastic ring and goes now it will be a bit more difficult to turn but the other option is to put the filter on that and then push it inside but you're not you wouldn't be too sure if it has uh, hit the hole there so I prefer uh, that method it will screech a bit because uh, the the plastic on on this cap is going into the into the paper of the filter but eventually goes inside it's actually quite easy to turn twenty five and that's twenty five newton meters next thing is to plug in the sump uh, that's that's my boat yours will be uh, slightly different and mine is an aluminium washer uh, they have to fit in a uh, new aluminium washer yours will be the normal 1.6 HDI so something like that uh, copper washers uh, one of these uh, that's a Febby um, a Febby number all the description of these components are in the description of the video remove the container with the old oil and of course it has to mop uh, all around the oil that has uh, kind of dripped the boat with a new washer inside mop a bit more and the sun bolt is 25 newton meters as well that's 25 so next thing is to uh, fill up with oil and I'm using Tutau Quartz in L ECS uh, 5W30 that's recommended for the 1.6 uh, HDI what of course I would like to do this is the dipstick I really would like to to get it 
let me show it roughly about two of these diamonds below so somewhere about here uh, about here like two diamonds to the top not to the very top not the middle but just two uh, of those so what I normally do I fill up um, my car takes roughly about 3.75 liters it, it won't be that it will be less than that because there is some oil still inside uh, the gullies and so on so I fill up I fill up with oil and then regularly check on the dipstick when it comes to about the middle I have a I fill up uh, with 100 milliliters then wait roughly about 10 minutes to so everything could drip and then I can kind of uh, estimate when it's uh, two uh, diamonds small funnel So I dipped around 275 or so uh, and I'll check the dipstick and I'm to about about three um, you probably can't quite see it about three squares from 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 the max so I'll wait uh, like 10 minutes or so to see if this will climb on the oil will, will drip down and then I'll with a like 50 milliliters per time and, and, and check it until it's about it's about uh, two from from the max and I filled up quite a bit let me see if it's uh, two uh, squares yeah it's exactly roughly about maybe it can be seen it's up to about exactly here uh, two squares from uh, from the from the max and I'll leave it like that the thing is that once I start it and uh, I'll go for a uh, test drive and then leave it overnight, check it on the next day uh, the oil would have probably uh, dropped slightly on the dipstick uh, because oil will go in the oil filter and so on around uh, so then I'll, I'll top it up to the, to the two uh, squares um, uh, below the max so next thing is to, to do the uh, air filter, uh, replace the air filter and I'm also doing the diesel filter as well so uh, while well, I'm at it, uh, just to replace both so in order to replace the air filter, this pipe needs to be taken out uh, because it's connected there. So there is one bolt uh, down here, one bolt uh, down here and this plastic thing and this, this uh, cover has to be taken. It's simple, lift and it's got four taps that, that connect. Next thing is to undo these two bolts until uh, this bracket is uh, kind of free. Same thing with that one until it's uh, kind of flipping uh, like that. Next thing is that plastic a bit here. I'll, I'll have a zoom version of that. But what I normally do, I normally have a screwdriver. So this plastic has a tap. I'll show it later. Pla uh, one is above here and one is underneath. So basically, I have a screwdriver on the one underneath and with the fingers uh, have it here and just push it slightly uh, that way. I mean, you can slightly push it out of the turbo just to be. Uh, easier. And there we go. So I'll have the screwdriver somewhere around here. So the screwdriver is somewhere around here, uh, pushing rather than up here. Up here, you can break it. So you have to be quite careful. And I have my finger like that. It's just easier to push that direction. So both are out, as far as I can see. And then you can just push it that side. So it comes out of here and then you take it out like that and then of course you just swing it from uh, from that side and it comes out from the from the muff sensor here are the two here are the two uh, plastic bits so you see how they um, they have a cut here and then cut here so I had the screwdriver underneath pushing on that one and then with a the finger on that one and basically you, you, you push it um, that side and this uh, can be taken out Next thing, of course, is the MAF sensor connection. And this is the MAF sensor. It's, it's fairly easy to, to undo. You put a screwdriver up on this pin and you just pull it out. There we go. And just uh, push it aside. So I'll pull on that pin. Next thing is to take that air pipe. Uh, you push it that side first to unclip. Uh, there is a clip there. I'll show it. Then undo uh, this pipe here. And then it's a kind of a we go out to take it so here is the here is the grommet uh, that that stick inside so you you push it that direction to unclick from that grommet it comes on this uh, pin here 
and here two plastic protruding things and one here basically that's a kind of a wiggle and next thing is to take the whole air box i know for some people there is a thing here that needs to be removed so for me i have enough space so it's easier for me to work on on the car uh, there is a kind of a way so you put your fingers in here but don't really push your fingers too much because you'll touch the muff sensor and put your uh, hand uh, behind the air box and basically lift it something like this as I said this is uh, can't quite see it. This is the muff sensor uh, inside. That's why you don't want to push your hands uh, too much inside. Uh, this is the air box and uh, I would generally um, look if, if it has been rubbing anywhere or um, it has a hole somewhere you have to check. So uh, I, have a, I have a video that you can check here how you can make this uh, box, uh, air box quite quiet and not really rattling uh, too much. Next thing is to undo the air box and it's one of these uh, square uh, things. One bolt here, second and uh, three bolts. And kind of opens uh, that way. Basically these uh, pins go inside and closes like that. Let's see what the condition of, of this filter is. Actually not too bad, I probably replaced it like a, um, several thousand miles ago, uh, but it's a bit, I mean you can't quite see it, but it's a bit on the dirty side, there are a few uh, leaves and uh, things inside. And for the air filter I'm using uh, Bosch uh, S3160, um, it's quite the same. Um, uh, it's the same as the other one, not quite the same, it's the same as the other one. Why am I using Bosch? Well, it's probably cheaper than MAN, uh, but you can use MAN, Bosch or, or anything. So it's a simple, uh, you basically stick it inside, I, there is no orientation, you can stick it anywhere, anywhere you want. You just have to make sure that it um, that is clicked everywhere and there are no gaps. Next thing is uh, to put uh, the cover and sideways, so there are one, two, three, four holes, so you put it sideways, turn it, and then of course you have to kind of hold it. Um, to turn uh, the bolts. So the filter is inside, it's fairly stable and uh, just to see if uh, everything is it's actually in place. Everything's in place. Um, Next thing is to apply this uh, tape around because uh, you can see the edges are um, is uh, probably sucking air from 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 that side rather than uh, from the meter there. Next thing I'm replacing the fuel filter as well. Uh, in order to undo that, that vacuum pipe needs to be removed. And basically, there are two squeezy things from one from top, one from bottom. So basically, you squeeze it and you pull it out. Um, there you go. So one from that side, so one from that side, and one from this side. And, squeeze it with two fingers. Uh, move this aside. Uh, next thing is the fuel lines. Basically again squeeze it in and push that side and there might potentially be some fuel uh, left in the lines so because probably there will be. I'll put some tissue around just to um, if there's any fuel just to uh, pick it up around it probably. It's just easier to push it around and then um, squeeze these two and just push There we go. Can remove that one. I also have a bit of a, a foil, uh, aluminium foil, just to cover these lines, not to have some dirt um, go inside. So there is a second fuel line that is again squeezy thing, but it's fairly difficult to uh, push from one side. So we have this plastic tool to kind of 
push from that side and then with the finger from the other and same thing I'll put some tissue if there are any water coming outside so this is the electric uh, component for the electric connection for the heater so basically you squeeze it underneath with the finger and push it so basically you push this thing that way that plastic thing and uh, you pull it uh, just to put it aside to be easier and then that line is a bit difficult because you cannot push that easy ah uh, there we go it's out but it's a bit kind of in the way too many too many pipes uh, pull it upwards also a bit of foil for that one just uh, not too dirt um, to go inside like that because I have a um, uh, water and diesel sensor inside it, it's back there and it's a bit difficult to undo or maybe not ah oh, yeah there we go that's the that's the sensor it's the same plug it has the same uh, probably you can't quite see from all these pipes but this this plastic thing is the same thing so next to take it out and you have to be quite careful not to tip it too much because full of uh, diesel fuel so it will leak here and there so basically you squeeze that up that side and um, push it upwards or pull it upwards and then you have to be quite careful with the with the different uh, with the different uh, things not to uh, not to leak here is the EGR valve uh, if you are interested in how to clean that one uh, check out uh, this video here next thing is to remove the the heater element to transfer it to the new filter and that's a bit difficult there is a there is a tap here I'm trying not to um, tilt it too much there is a tap here that you kind of push aside and this tap here you push uh, that side and this could lift slightly and then you can uh, kind of pull it out but it's a bit on the difficult side to do that so I'll see if I can do um, somewhat a good job pull it out from that side slightly upwards and then I'll try to swing it from that side Ah, there is a bit maybe it's coming out so I have to push it from that side there will probably be a bit of diesel fuel there we go pushed it out two o-rings if you want to replace it you can replace it but this I've replaced not so uh, not so long ago and uh, this now needs to go uh, into uh, the other uh, fuel filter so for the fuel filter I'm using Delphi um, HDF uh, 939 um, it's a bit different that the older one is Bosch uh, that's Delphi but otherwise they, they, they uh, do exactly the same job this is for the for the sensor that's a dirt for nothing and um, this lies inside First of all, to put the heater element, basically it should slide in, but in general uh, it goes underneath here, underneath there. But in general, it's a bit on the difficult side. Uh, it's not entirely too easy to uh, put quite inside, but this time might potentially be slightly easier. Here we go. This time was actually easier than than, than other times I, I I've done it. push just to make sure that this everything's inside so one last thing uh, so if you have a water in diesel sensor and the sensor says that you have water in the diesel what you can do is there is a valve here on top so you undo this only slightly and because the water the diesel is lighter than the water it will be above the water so the water will be kind of at the bottom of the fuel filter fuel filter cells like that the water will be at the bottom so you undo this slightly, you have a container or something, generally there should be a pipe here going underneath the vehicle and the water will 
come out of here so you you undo this and drip i don't know 100 milliliters would be quite enough and then you tie this up and uh, that's it you've you've drained the water from your fuel filter so first i would like to plug in this uh, the dirt thing it's just a it's just an empty uh, it goes in that hole and it's just empty it doesn't really um, there is nothing there but I'll just plug it in because then it's then it's easier and then it's simply uh, the filter slots in like that and uh, you have to push it in uh, kind of until it clicks make sure that this pin is underneath there and it doesn't uh, move so the bottom line is that one I'll, um, Look this one first. This one, it's a bit difficult, but um, it just simply clicks. It's a bit difficult, but it's not undoable. Then I'll put the electric uh, component. It simply um, clicks inside, and then the top uh, connection again. It simply uh, push uh, like that, and then make sure that they kind of fit in there so uh, filter is replaced uh, but of course uh, it's empty and there's a lot of air in the system so the, there is a, a bulb that um, gets fuel uh, around and you have to squeeze it quite a number of times I'll do this uh, at the end of the video next is to put the air filter inside of course if, if you're replacing the fuel filter don't forget to push in this uh, vacuum line um, down there. The air filter box, I've put a band of this um, gaffer tape or whatever tape just to uh, close these two bits so air doesn't really come from this uh, hot side of the engine and pass the MAF sensor so it's unmetered there. Um, so there is a bit of a, a way to put it inside. Uh, I generally did two pins, the two rubber grommets so I generally hold it, uh, tilt it to that side and then you move it forward and it should be able to uh, click inside and there we go that's um, nice and sturdy next thing is to click in the MAF sensor don't forget the MAF sensor and that's uh, nice and stable next thing is to uh, fit in the air to the uh, to the turbo. The uh, one other thing while I'm doing that, I've removed the. There is a, a rubber O-ring here, and that's the the old one. And I have another video uh, you can see down there. Well, with a different finger. Um, if you if you look at this, is really scorched and it doesn't make a seal around here, and oil pulls uh, uh, at the engine there. So. Check out that video. You can you can buy this and uh, basically replace it, and we'll make a better seal and won't really leak. So I have to uh, fit it now in, and it's a tight fit. This is a very tight fit um, to the crankcase, so you have to uh, push it in. Eventually, it will uh, get squashed, but you have to actually um, kind of push it in. Uh, next thing to fit it first to that side. to get kind of inside, then um, to the crankcase breather and then to the turbo. And it's a simple push from all sides like that. And that's quite a tight fit there and doesn't really move at all, fairly stable. Next thing is the two bolts um, for the air filter and the turbo. And it was nice and snug and then on the turbo as well. Next is that air pipe and it's a bit of a, you wiggle it inside, this has to clip, um, this is the clip uh, for the pipe that has to go inside uh, underneath and for me it's a bit of a wiggle to get it inside the pipe, don't forget, and then here it needs to be pushed that side. Next thing, this pipe uh, really <laughs> vibrates quite a bit because from taking it in and out, so I have two zip ties to um, kind of make it a bit of a, a bit of silent, kind of underneath there, 
goes out there and then I have to link it and of course on top yeah, that's nice and snug in there I have to cut it afterwards so this doesn't really stick but it's nice and doesn't really vibrate um, anymore next thing is that um, air pipe this is goes inside and is turned uh, clockwise okay. and then it's under the uh, rotation minus it's just easy uh, pushing but uh, you also um, turn it and then uh, I think clockwise I'm not too sure you have to see how it goes so next thing because uh, I've um, done the fuel filter uh, done that so we have to squeeze this bulb so uh, fuel will go around the system and will purge it out of air and it's quite a bit you squeeze it until it gets hard and you can hear uh, fluid coming through And I'll do that until it's really hard and then uh, squeeze it a, f a bit more until I can kind of, it's quite hard and, and, and fuel passes through. And it's kind of empty of air, well it's quite quite a while, we have to squeeze it quite a lot. I was squeezing it for quite a few minutes but this is the end, so just before. Uh, you can hear how the fuel is going through the uh, fuel filter and it's passing through uh, back to the tank of fuel. And that's now hard, quite hard to to squeeze. And I, I can't hear any more air bubbles coming through. So this is uh, now quite good uh, to, to, to go. I mean, there is no air in the system. Probably squeeze it five more times just to make sure. Last thing to put the cover on. Of course, do a test drive. Uh, then check for leaks. The sump plug, the oil filter, and the, the, the fuel filter. You have to replace if you have replaced it. The oil filter, anywhere around if there are any if there are any leaks. Also, after the engine has been cold, let's say overnight, you check the dipstick again. I'll check the dipstick again, and if it has dropped slightly, because the uh, there will be um, the the oil filter will pick up some oil so this will drop like one or two uh, of these uh, squares so I'll top it up until two uh, from the maximum next thing if you've uh, performed an annual service and replaced the oil and oil filter you would like to reset uh, the service indicator counter and to on my display uh, it will appear down here so if I flick the switch on the first it just shows uh, the, the battery and uh, how many miles I've done, 103,000. And if I flick it second time, it will show this uh, uh, service indicator that I've left. I have left 4,950 miles left uh, before uh, service. So I switch it off um, and wait for this to uh, stop showing anything, to, to shut down the ECU to shut down. And it's shut down, so I have two uh, buttons here, this is for the trip computer on the right uh, down there and this is the rail stat for um, making it darker and lighter so basically everything switched off and the keys and the ignition but they haven't turned it so you press that one and turn the key to the second position and there will be a counter here going from 10 uh, to 0 when this reaches 0 you stop it and that resets your uh, service counter indicator so there we go, I'll, I'll hold that button and you basically have to watch here, I'll hold that button, uh, flick it twice, and there we go, 10, 9, 8. And then I release, and that's it, I can, I can switch it off, so this is to zero, I'll shut it down, and then when I 
uh, put the key back in you see this will be um, with the spanner thing will show 12,000 so in other words it's reset so that shut down so this was 4950 left till the next service so if I flick it the switch now and this shows 12,000 so I've got 12,000 miles and this is in miles left and this is how you can reset uh, your service uh, counter indicator that show here with the, with the spanner thing it counts down from the top it counts down from 12,000 at least in the UK version 12,000 miles down to uh, zero and it will go minus and this is it this is how I do my annual service on my 1.6 HDI Peugeot partner I do it every uh, six months or so. Uh, I don't do the uh, fuel filter uh, every six months, but uh, the rest I do it uh, roughly about every six months. So if you have any questions, let me know. Hopefully that is useful to someone how exactly to do it. Let me know for any comments in the comment section, comment section down below. Thank you very much indeed.